the wooden spoon decider. Most people called this before the championship, but Wales and Italy come into this game from very different places. Hello, amateurs, and welcome to our Six Nations series. I've got Elko with me again today. Look, there he is. There he is there. Hello, TT. Good to see you uh, last weekend of this. And um, yeah, we start with the uh, massive wooden spoon decider. Absolutely. Super Saturday is back. We absolutely love it. And we're hoping for another epic one this year. But as I mentioned in that little intro there, these teams are coming to this game from very different places. Italy have been encouraging throughout this championship, got a draw against France and a win last time out against Scotland. Wales, massive rebuild, zero from four. How do you see this game panning out psychologically? Yeah, it's it's going to be very interesting. Um, you know, Italy will have a, have a spring in their step. They've been fantastic the last uh, two rounds. Um, playing under a new coach, uh, seem to have bags of confidence um, and um, playing some really nice stuff as well and, and some new blood in there as well for those guys. And then you got Wales. I'm wondering, uh, we spoke last week about the, the, the confusing section uh, with the centres being dropped out. And I, I'm wondering, did the wily old Gatland have knowledge that um, uh, North would be announcing his retirement and this would be his last gig? Because I think that's going to be a huge plus in many ways because I think the crowd will I mean the crowd are going to be awesome anyway and behind the team but I think even more so for his last game um in the red shirt I think they're it's going to be wild um now that might put more pressure on I don't think so I think I think they've got through that uh, bit but um yeah it's going to be mega atmosphere there and, and a, a huge game for for both sides um for, for obvious reasons yeah, that psychological driver of North, it being his last game, a proper, proper Welsh legend. I think you can only, you know, those are only a benefit to any team. I think they're going to want to go out, his teammates, and do the very best they can for him. And those little things, those little margins can make a difference. On the other side of it, I do wonder as well whether Italy, the emotional high that they went through last week of getting their first Six Nations win at home for, I think it was 11 years, that's huge. That is absolutely huge. Can they get back up again? to play, go to Wales and win this weekend? Those are the questions that I think are going to decide this game. Let's get into the selections. Let's get into it. And the Wales forwards to kick off. And there is a couple of changes here. So Dylan Lewis comes in at tight head. I question whether that would be uh, done anyway as because he's done well, really well off the bench. But Azarati hasn't even made the bench, so I'm guessing he might well be injured. And also the reshuffle through four, five and six with Jenkins going back to the second row in place of Will Rowlands and Alex Mann, who had a couple of really good games at the start of this championship, back on the blind side. Alko, what are you seeing in this forward pack? Yeah, I think this is reverting back after, you know, clearly they were playing against a huge uh, French team. I, I think, you know, they don't need to to have that sort of same, same uh, pack out again. I think they need to be... Um, sort of uh, as fluid as they have been previously in, t in terms of running the ball and being very sort of um, looking at the breakdown as well and, and sort of really, really sort of competing there as hard as they can um, and trying to have the fittest players as well because I think this will be fairly open, although I think even with this selection, I think they'll they'll probably revert and be quite pragmatic um, in terms of how they play, although that's quite dangerous because the best we've seen Wales, I think, is when... <laughs> Is when they've been chucking it about, particularly last week. So it's a hard one because uh, because Italy are so different now and pragmatic, and um, with Casada at the helm, that they seem to be able to take advantage of loose kicks and, and that kind of thing. So um, uh, it, don't get me wrong; I, th I think these this will still be a very combative um, pack, um, but maybe they're just looking at um, horses for courses here. I think. Yeah, I, I think this is the best pack they could have picked probably for this week. It's got the most consistent performance that they've had in throughout this championship. And I think Lewis coming onto the tight head really adds strength there. I think he's probably been Wells' best tight head this championship. And now he's back, I assume, to getting close to full fitness uh, in terms of aerobic stuff. I think that's the right call. OK, let's move into the backs. And we've already spoken about this a little bit with Tompkins and North coming back in to replace... Watkin and Roberts, and I sense that this was very much decided before last week. I think those two guys that came in were only going to play that game no matter what happened, and this was always going to be the case. What do you think? 
Yeah, I, th- I think it's pretty clear now. Um, I think if they if they done anything naughty, we, we wouldn't be wouldn't be seeing them for the rest of the championship. Um, and actually, it's quite it's quite cool actually that they that they that you know having seen how well that backline played last week, um, particularly the back three. Um, again, psychologically, these two guys coming in with loads of experience in what will be a very difficult game. Um, th- these guys will have played in, in difficult games like this before and will be a calming force, I think, um, but also um, a very direct and um, sort of, uh, you know, really dangerous uh, partnership there um, for the Italians to have to deal with. Um, and bearing in mind how well 12 and 13 played for Italy last week, um, this this is really good for Wales, I think, uh, coming in and, um, yeah, just giving a bit of um, calmness and, and stability, I think. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And I think the force of these two centres against the force of the Italian centres, because they are strong powerhouses, aggressive players, along with having skills, you know, passing skills and being able to run, I think they need to try and take chunks out of those centres and really put pressure on them physically. And Tompkins and North are the right guys to do that for sure. Um, just in the back three, I thought Dyer was as been outstanding this championship. The amount of touches he gets is absolutely unbelievable. So, I mean, it would be good to see Josh Adams try and get as many touches as Dyer this week. I think that would be a good sort of stat for him to head to. And then if he does, then Wales will probably be looking quite dangerous. Yeah, I mean, the, their back three has been really, really good. Um, we're, not, we're, not, we're, we're a massive fan of as well and looks extremely dangerous. And they're starting to click, you know. And, and um, this is what I mean. I think... It, it's a tough one because it could be quite a nervy game and it might come down to who makes the most amount of mistakes. But on the back of that, they've got to go and try and win it. Um, and I, th- I think if they sit back and get into that kind of game with the Italians, that could be very dangerous. Um, you know, I-, I think they should go for it and, and, and play controlled attacking rugby. And, and as you said, try and get the, the back three to have as as many touches as before, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> pretty sure North's going to be be up for this, um, so I would expect him to be hitting some hard lines as well, uh, running down the ten channel uh, quite, quite hard. Um, but also maybe maybe have, they might have some moves from um, maybe off some set plays and things like that to because he he will be absolutely going for it. Yeah, I agree. I think they need to do that. Get the crowd up, get the crowd firing, and make it an absolute bear pit atmosphere for Italy. Okay, onto the bench. And these front rowers are wildly inexperienced. They've got virtually no caps. Um, Lloyd, the hooker, I don't think has started a senior game of rugby yet. O'Connor's got, yeah, they, they're wildly inexperienced. If these guys have to come on early, that could be a big problem for Wales. You know, I think they'll be fine if they have to just play the last 10 minutes or something like that. Yeah. But it's um, it's really inexperienced in the front row there. Very, it's a bit scary. That, that's a different hooker, is it, to... to um... No, it's the same as last week. Same guy, oh, bless yeah. him. He was, yeah. He, um, I don't think he's had yeah any any senior starts at all. And it's, I mean, it's it's mad really to think that they're in that position where they don't have um, someone a, a little bit more experienced. But it just it just shows you what they've done with with, with sort of or the guys that they've they've sort of lost or or who are injured and. Um, but you know, it seems to be a quite a good camp. I don't know if you noticed last week. I didn't pick it up on our in our sort of post game review but when he when he threw the crooked in um which you know was quite close to their line and stuff and they all they all just laughed it off and said oh, you know and it, I thought it was great you know I've been there before um but um yeah it is a bit of a worry you know considering how you know well we rate the Italian front row as well uh, both both um starting and on the on the bench and if they get an injury early doors, yeah, it could be um, that could be a real, real problem um, for the for the Welsh if they're not getting any sort of front football off off scrum time. That could be that could be bad. Yeah, it could. Um, but they dealt with it a similar uh, scenario pretty well at Twickenham. Um, so you know maybe these guys, yeah, if if they don't have to do it for too long, you know you can pull something out for sure. Time will tell on that. Hardy comes up back in for Gareth Davis as a scrum half replacement, and that's the only other change on the bench. Obviously, Roland's swapping in for Alex Mann as well. Uh, okay, let's move on to Italy. And the forwards are exactly the same. Um, no, they're not. Excuse me. Canoni's come back in, hasn't he? Vincent started last time out. So Canoni's come back in, uh, otherwise the same. 
yeah, yeah. Um, I would have been surprised if they if they done much with this. They were absolutely fantastic last week, and they've got to they've got to back their fitness levels and stuff. I think they will be tired, um, but they've got to kind of try and continue on from where they left off, and that might be difficult um, emotionally. Uh, I'm sure they had a few beers <laughs> the other night, um, but I, you know, the sometimes the problem with uh, the principality is that it's just such an amazing place to play in and um you know uh, they will i hope um uh, for as a neutral i hope they they sort of will be fueled by that by that noise and and, and the, the the intensity of the place um it will lift them just as much yes the pressure times it, it, it will work for wales but it will also raise the italians so i see these guys sort of cracking on from where they, and they, they were absolutely awesome last week you know Years gone by, you used to go, you know, either Italy scrum or Italy can't win a line out or mall or their back line or whatever. That is something that actually, you look at them, they're 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 good everywhere, um, and um, particularly up front, I think they they've been exceptional um, with their driving malls. They got a lot of joy out of that last week. So, um, not as big as the French, though. So that'll be good for the for the Welsh. <laughs> yeah, not, not as big indeed. Now, I heard an interview with Seb Negri this week and he confirmed that they certainly did have quite a few Peronis after the game last week, and rightly so. But, um, I mean, him coming back last week was huge. With Canoni coming back as well this week, they are the two big ball carriers that they've been missing earlier in this championship. So I think they are well set to have a, you know, have a really good performance from the forward pack this week. Into the backs and a couple of changes here. Varney comes in for Pajarello. Uh, which is an interesting one. I, I mean, I, I said I think Pajarello is fantastic and Varney hasn't quite been up to his best, in my opinion, on this this championship so far. But the big loss for Italy is Capuozzo, who seems to be injured. He was struggling all the way through the game last week. Uh, however, Pani comes in. Uh, he Apparently, his preferred position is fullback. So that's great. He's absolutely rapid and he has got a massive, massive kick on him. So expect Italy to get some big kicking metres if Wales kick badly to them. Yeah, um, I'd love to know uh, what the the nines uh, stats were from last week with how long the ball was in play. I'd say his, his mileage must have been up something silly. So that might be a call that they've done there, just looking at stats and things like that, because I thought he played particularly well. Or... or or Casada had this in his head, you know, with his nines, he did a bit of rotation in the first three games. They need to have a look at everybody, and maybe he, he felt that um, this was the way to go for this horses for courses, really. Um, and yeah, that's a shame. A fullback there, um, he's been he's been fantastic. Uh, I think he, uh, he did take a, a big, huge whack from the hooker um, late doors um, against Scotland through the day. So, so potentially, but it's you know, it's the. It looks a, a good, well balanced back line. They've got now with Lina a finisher. By the way, he must think, it, you know, what's the fuss about Italy rugby? Play one, win one, never lost, <laughs> stop the train. Um, uh, and and uh, you know that that centre partnership, uh, centre partnership looks looks really good, really nicely balanced as well. So, and what's really cool with with Italy, I think going in now, where teams have disrespected them before, the massive respect. They've also use some really clever kicking moves that will actually cause Wales to have to think about that. And they can use that as a foil to maybe, you know, look like they're going to kick and maybe give some short passes. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Lina back, back up uh, last week. Uh, his, his, his debut was out of this world. Yeah, that's a really good point about having kicks available to them because Italy, for all their incredible flair in last year's Six Nations, they were predictable. You knew they were going to run the ball from almost everywhere. So that makes it easier to, to defend in some ways. Now they've got the variations, they've got the kicking threats. It makes it more difficult because the defenders are always going to question what are Italy going to choose to do in this situation? And, you know, their running game is still really elite. So, um, yeah, it gives it makes them a stronger side for sure. Yeah, Onto the bench with, and with, with Casada there, that then obviously then you've got a coach who will. I mean, he's playing chess. He's playing big boy chess. He is moving pieces, knowing full well what the other teams will do, and that, that's that's such a massive advantage that they haven't had in a while. Um, with a really strong coach with with that kind of mind. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Um, onto the bench, and we are looking very settled here. Gone back to a six-two with Zuliani. Becoming fit again, um, Pajarello and Marin 
the back replacements. I just like the fact that it looks nice and settled. We love these front row replacements. They come on and add a huge amount of energy. Uh, and yeah, I, I think they're well set. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, you know, having having started the the campaign with not having a clue who any of these guys are, you know, we can now say it's settled. We recognise them. We can see how good they are. I think it could be actually a great thing that Vincent's on the bench because when the I think there will there will be tar tar bodies. Um, we've seen that with with Wales before. Um, how Ireland sort of ripped them apart in the last sort of 10, 15 minutes with some very tired front row forwards. So Vincent likes the fast track, so he'll he'll be he'll be uh, he'll be there and, and causing some problems. But yeah, it's it's well balanced, it's strong. Uh, obviously forward orientated with a six two, and that might be uh, interesting um, towards the last uh, twenty minutes up front. Absolutely. Um, and well, let's get into it. What type of game do we think we'll see? Do we know if the roof's going to be open or shut? I haven't heard anything. As I haven't as heard as anything. I, I, I presume shut, uh, I would think. Um, it has been the last two, hasn't it? So why would they change it? Um, I don't know. Um, I haven't even seen the forecast if it's if it's terrain, but I, w- I, would, I would hope it's shut. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be... Uh, it's 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 a, it's a I think the first five ten minutes is going to be very interesting to see what what happens and and how people settle in because it is going to be loud and crazy, um, um, and it's for me it's kind of uh, I was thinking about this earlier like f- Wales played against a huge French team so is it going to be you know when you you're training for sprints and you have like a big weights jacket on <laughs> and then you take it off and you're flying i'm just wondering they're gonna be battle hardened um it's in a way it's gonna be a relief but then you know don't don't take your eye off the ball because the italians are, are very strong and technically very very good now okay they're not as big as the french but i just you know what what's gonna happen there will they be free flowing and if wales i think wales have got to play i i think if they go into the shell i think they'll be dangerous against Casada, as we already, already mentioned i think tactically he's proving himself really good and I think for, in order for them to get the crowd into it, they need to play. They start box kicking and, and not really going for it. And we have this kind of how it was um, the first half with Scotland. Um, yeah, I, th- I think they've got to be careful and, and, and try and get the crowd into it. And then, then you've got Italy, who don't want the crowd to get into it, probably. Um, are they going to be quite pragmatic? So I don't know, really. My, my gut tells me it's going to be sevens. <laughs> you know, and... Uh, Maybe North is saying, you know, give me the ball and, and let's run everything sort of thing. I don't know. But then with Gatland, he might say, no, let's bring it all back. You know, a bit more uh, sort of uh, warm ball and, and, and get around the corner. But they've looked their best when they played. So I'm, I'm hoping as a neutral, it's it's wild and uh, it, the ball's getting chucked all over the place. Yeah, it, it's so interesting because I think with both these teams, we've played, seen them play in this championship with huge confidence at times. And when they have, they've looked incredible. But they've also had periods where they've looked like they don't really know what they're doing, like they're struggling to get any kind of their game plan onto the pitch as well. Now, this is going to be a high-pressure environment for sure. So I'm just hoping they can both not turn up and be nervous. I'm hoping they both can turn up and give the best version of themselves because if they do, it could be a wildly entertaining game. Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't want to sort of the uh, as we laughed about the, the 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 first half Italy against France where they just couldn't exit. <laughs> you know, really, really basic stuff and and sort of. But then you're like, oh, it'd be great if they don't exit because then they'll kick along and um, you know we'll, we'll 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 run everything sort of thing. But you're right. Uh, I think it's it, it's it's possible that they can both play pragmatically, but yet it's still really attacking. We saw that last week with some of the games, particularly England. You can you can play really high intense physical rugby, and then when it's on, bang, you go, you go, and you, you score. We're not talking about sort of Fiji, Fijian style or barbarian style, chucking it everywhere sort of thing. Um, but yeah, my, my, I, I've a feeling this is going to be a bit of a, a bang, and, and you know, even though. It's not the the top uh, of the menu sort of thing um, for the weekend with Super Saturday. It's huge, like it's massive for both teams. Uh, it's no one wants that wooden spoon, and particularly Gatland to, at home, no, not a chance. So it's 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 a big big game. Yeah, I wonder actually if Casada will be framing this slightly differently because Italy can finish third in this championship, which oh, yeah. is a 
they've never finished that high before. So it would be interesting psychologically whether, you know, they frame it that way. You know, we are going there to win third place. Well, I agree with you. They, they won't. I don't even think Derby Talkman wouldn't spin. They don't need to. They've they've got enough on in the cupboard, but like they they will be framing it going for their best ever finish ever, um you know and and arguably they sh- they 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 should they should be going for their third win which is you know crazy it could be it could have been coming second or third so um yeah I I agree with you he will be framing it in a in a more positive sense I'm sure I'm sure Gatlin's trying to do that as well but it's harder you know when you physically look at the the table sort of thing. Um, but yeah, and that listen, that, that's that's a really good point, TG, because that might, if it's tight towards the end, you know, if you're going for your best ever finish, are you going to be a bit more looser and fluid than fearing losing to Italy and getting getting a wooden spoon as well as potentially might be? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, some key battles. We've already spoken about the centres. I think that will be absolutely vital. But also, I think. The back rowers, in particularly the ball carrying back rowers, because I think Wales, if they're going to win, I think they're going to need to dominate possession. Um, I don't think you know they they're going to be hitting quick strike plays too often. So I think they're going to want to play and play and play. Now we've seen Italy's defence against um, heavy forwards stand up really well so far this championship. So can Wales maintain that pressure? Can they maintain that? momentum in attack which I think they'll need to do and then on the flip side obviously the Italian back rowers you know back with um, Canoni uh, in particular will they be able to make massive dents in this Welsh defensive line which has looked well organised but not dominant for sure yeah I think that'll be massive massive um, so slightly different than a back row battle on the ground but more their their sort of tackling and and ball carrying and and uh, you know, make make making dents um, and and stopping stopping um, gain lines sort of thing because it will be it will be crucial. Um, yeah, that's one to look at. And then obviously, the, the, we've spoken about already the the, the centres going at each other is is huge. Um, and that's probably, hopefully, in one sense, that's where the game will be won. You know, with a a George North try in the corner potentially. Yeah. Okay, then it's time. We've got to put our money where our mouth is. What do we think? Who is going to win and by how much? Okay, I am going for a... Uh, 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 I was go- No, I'm going... <laughs> I was going to go for a home Wales. No, I'm not. I'm going Italy plus five. Interesting. My heart... Also says Wales, particularly for George North. Obviously, that's the key factor there for me. But, man, I just think Italy have got too much about them at the moment. I think it's going to be tight and I think it could be a really uh, back and forth battle similar to Wales' game last week. But I see Italy being too strong at the end. And I also think they'll win by a similar amount. I'm going to go, or I think we're going to have plenty of points, 32-28. Ooh, cracker. An absolute cracker. Okay, that's what we think, people. But what do you think at home? Have we uh, gone through the teams here and identified where you know the key battles are going to be? Do you think we've uh, sort of gone, got the tactics right, or do you think the teams are going to play slightly differently? We'd love to hear it from you in the comments down below, and we'll join you there for a friendly conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there, if you don't mind. Helps other people find it. And Elko, thank you so much for your time today. Cheers, CT. Speech of the weekend. And for those at home, you can subscribe there. Other way, Elko. <laughs> no. Is it? <laughs> yeah, it's the other way. Oh, no, it is. Sorry. <laughs> Edit. Edit. You can, watch that one. you can watch that one next. <laughs> Don't forget to get out and play.